Bump, bump. Okay, I'm here with Christer Carlson. He is um, he's a guy who is in Denmark. Who, uh, I've talked quite a bit about actually lately in various places about the uh, RASA transmissions, which has been really an amazing experience. And so rather than me talking about it all the time, I thought we'd better talk to Christer. And uh, because like this channel, Ayahuasca Magic, has been like um, it, a lot of it has been me exploring consciousness. A lot of people have sort of followed along and trying to figure out uh, what's going on. A lot of people like astonished with the effects of ayahuasca and this kind of stuff. But for a lot of people, even going back to like the 60s and looking at people like Ram Das and uh, Leary and all those guys, they started doing drugs, but then they ended up like in India meditating and looking for something bigger. Um, and so that's kind of what led me to Christer, one of the viewers of the channel, uh, this guy, Chris Fippen, who's a really nice guy, uh, put me in touch with a few people and eventually with Christer too. Um, and he was trying to push my buttons. I think Chris Fippen trying to make me <laughs> try to push me into, into something higher, <clears throat> Um, and then, you know, I did a few meditations with a few people who do RASA, but then when, when I started working with Mr. Christer here, oh, wow, dude, things got serious. Now, I want to say that uh, Christer's website is finish-me.com. Finish me. And that's a funny phrase, finish me. And uh, maybe that's where to start <laughs> off. You know? it's like, uh, uh, so, yeah, Christer, um, what, what is that all about, finish me? right finish me says it all doesn't yeah. it no it more does. looking no more seeking no more nothing just do it yeah. yeah and um you know it's funny because like one of the things that i see is like uh i was reading something by ramana maharshi yesterday and he was saying um you don't need sadhana you don't need the prayer all you need to do is ask, like, who am I or whatever, right? Mm. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, so that it sort of begs the question, because, like, a lot of people seem to think there's a path, and you got to go into this path, and you, you work slowly up through stages of consciousness, and you do these things. And, um, and what you're saying is just, just finish. Yeah. Just get there. <laughs> now, it's interesting. Now, in your own life, um, was that was that the case with you or did you actually have some kind of path now i was on your website and you talk a little bit about your experience and the unique thing about your experience i think is that I mean, i'm not sure but it seems to me that you lived a pretty clean life it didn't seem like you're out like dozing lsd every weekend or anything it seems like you're just kind of like an extreme sports guy and more interested in sort of intellectual pursuits and mm -hmm. uh and that led you to to finishing yeah my right? entire yeah. life, since I was a little kid, my father bought me these books about nature, uh, fishes, you know, dinosaurs, all that stuff. And uh, yeah. ultimately, it just led me into this extreme curiosity of what is it all about? What, what is it? What's, what's reality? Yeah. And it just, I just dove so much into theories, into theories, trying to collect everything. Um, trying to find out what this what uh, what it was about, because I um, I had a lot of depressions, especially about meaninglessness and not seeing any point of being alive at all. Just my little fraction of time is absolutely irrelevant for infinity, and I couldn't grasp that you were just supposed to just go away, and that was it. You will be gone forever. And I like saw the universe, you know, the process of the universe decay and how many years that's going to take. And I'm like, it, no, it's just doesn't make any sense. And it made me really sad and uh, yeah, depressive, actually really bottom depressive and uh, poof, all that stuff, you know, also with emotional labor that you carry on uh, from childhood. It, it just brought me into... Um, it was kind of like the biggest fire that you can have in your heart to try to understand something. It's, it's not to be redeemed on any level. 
it was simply just understanding. I wanted to understand, nothing more. You know, and not to save myself, not to feel better like that, uh, not to fix my uh, current issues, just to satisfy that lifelong wish, that inner purity of fire that was burning to know. And, um, you know, I collected all the pieces and, you know, you, you go through phases, you know, you start to do system thinking. I was starting to see everything in systems. Everything appeared in systems to me. And I started to jump in and out of perspectives. And I read about some psychological models and that adapted too. And I started to be like this. I felt like, like my mind was going to be like, now I finally understood the process of um, increasing your intellect, you can say, to get a bigger, broader consciousness, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And, um, and then I uh, was studying geology at the University of Copenhagen. And that's where like, I started to really collect the last bits. I felt like I, I got that complete dynamic understanding of the planet there like everything that i've been collected so far about the universe my the mind just pulled threads between everything everything i accumulated on that school it just pulled a thread back to my past into some form where i'm sitting and thinking you know it just gathered and then it just blew me away that you know, I, I saw the earth as one cell. It wasn't divided anymore. It was just one cell. Um, yeah. And then after that, uh, of course, there was a very weird, spontaneous awakening out of nowhere. <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't know about spirituality. I'd never been in that world ever. So wow. it was very weird for me to be there, like seeing that because I, you, I jumped into non-durership right away. So my body was doing and I was not attending it. And it was such a weird thing to join without having any knowledge of that. You never had any knowledge of that. So you think like, oh my God, I'm going insane. <laughs> Which ironically, <laughs> you are too. <laughs> yeah. Right. But that was kind of like the... That's interesting. So that was that was like when you were pretty young. Then you already had this vibe that there was something, yes, sort of misaligned. And you know, like I don't know. Like, see, it's funny because I'm I'm completely the opposite. I was completely naive. I had no interest in spirituality. <laughs> no anything. Wasn't that smart, et cetera, et cetera. But like, <laughs> um, but looking at it now, and like listening to you, um. It's funny because you know, we can talk about non-doership and, and non-duality and living in presence or whatever, but like it does seem that there is like um, at least at this level, like there's some kind of karmic, karmic. I mean, why why are you different? Because I mean, because that's not a typical experience for most people, right? And you're talking about uh, a couple of things which strike me. There is like one is like you had this desire. This, uh, what you what you refer to as the fire in your heart, which to me is like very sort of elemental, energetic, mm. and not non-dual, right? It's it's almost like um, it's almost like uh, I don't know what it is. How would you describe it? How would you describe that fire? Like in terms of non-duality, because non-duality and non-durship seems like okay, that's what it is, right? But then you started here with this fire and this sensation that you had to learn more. Mm. Um, so, uh, mm, yeah, I've always been a very adventurous spirit. Always been out yeah. running about doing stupid stuff and, you know, funny stuff <laughs> with my friends, but yeah. mostly dangerous parts. We just yeah. pushed ourselves more and more and more. And it was always out in the nature somewhere. I think that thing, that spark, you can say that life has never changed. It never changed. It was always okay. there and it was so vibrant. And, it, you know, even though I wasn't aware of it, it was, I was, where, uh, I was very intuitive with my feelings and how I was feeling. Yeah. So I guess that was kind of overriding. Mm -hmm. And I would just intuitively identify with that. That's, you know. That's me. Did you have any experiences like um, 
Oh, and if you don't want to answer anything, just we can just skip stuff over. But you know, like, uh, did you have any experiences ever, like, uh, of like um, blocks? Like, because it sounds like you were like you really interested in something and you pursued it. Did you ever like want to pursue something, but then uh, there was like an internal pushback, like oh, I better not do that, or was it just? Uh, always... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah? I practiced that actually when I was in the grocery shopping. I just went in. Shopping. Yeah, I That's practiced really that dangerous. sensation. Really dangerous. Really yeah, dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Don't get the milk, right? <laughs> no. Uh, before uh, I tapped into those kind of uh, awareness, I was uh, stopping. So at multiple times in my life, I should have died. One really good example is that we were snowboarding through the the forest up in the mountains, and then I just felt I need to stop immediately. We were going really fast. And you know yeah. the body stopped kind of before the mind. It was just, yeah. And then two meters ahead, there was just a cliff, and that would be my certain death. Wow! So we were lying, right. my you know, me, and my friends. We were like uh, completely shocked that what the fuck just happened. You know, we should have died. Yeah. And we took off the snowboards and we walked gently back. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. No, that's funny. I think that happens. Um that that sense of intuition what do you think that is that mm. like um because like that's like the um normal everyday consciousness having some being informed mm. by something else right yeah and like um it's being informed or is it just or is it just the awareness which is already inside of us informing us what do you think that is you get I mean, great a, yeah grades no continue oh um i mean i've had experiences like this too like where you you um where you you're not really sure about something or you have mm -hmm. a feeling and then like i like i've spoken about this in the channel it's not the best example but it is is one that just jumps up in my head so i had a, a two years ago i i was out on the deck here and i was just so, so like looking out at the valley just thinking, oh, this is so so nice and all of a sudden i felt something like out here well, that's a weird feeling. And it started getting closer and closer and closer. And like yeah. after a second, just bah. And it was like um it, it just said your wife's cheating on you. Uh, and I'm like, and I'm and I'm like, what? But it's like this thing is like, dude, I wasn't looking for that, right? And it was like, um, but it's this funny thing, is where you get these um messages. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they come from. Now, some people who are more on the other side of things might say, Well, it's your spirit guides. Mm. Your spirit guides are doing. Um, I'm just wondering, like, because you do. Um, it seems to me that you had this sort of awakening of non doership, but then you mentioned on your website too that after that, because you had no knowledge of spirituality, so you started learning about spirituality, and you mentioned also yeah. something about Kundalini. And yeah, I don't know how you feel about this, but like my first experience of spirituality was more about Kundalini, right? And yeah. like, uh, yeah. or it was drugs, and then that the Kundalini came from that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, what, uh, where was I? Yeah. So like when you, you, you mentioned that, you know, you love Kundalini. I'm just wondering what your, you had this non doership and how was the, how did that emerge? Cause to me, Kundalini seems like it's kind of like the, the deity, if you will, of the mind, mm -hmm. right? It's almost mm -hmm. like that's the energetic structure of reality. And then the non doership um, I tend to think of that as Shiva. It's just like, it's nothing. It's right. It's just like, boom. and so inside of this, uh, and I may be wrong. I mean, feel free to correct me. I'm just like saying it in my own way, you know? So I'm just wondering, like, once you became aware of non-duality or of this uh, non doership mm. how did, how did it, how did you um, confront the Kundalini? Cause that's a quite a different vibe. Um, yeah. It definitely is. Both of them, very different in experience. Doership is just kind of like a uh, perspective experience where you're seeing and realizing that you're not anything of it and it's happening on its own. This is also nice to pull towards the scene of my snowboard that the mind is not interfering. At all. I mean, the mind is not kind of part of it, the relative mind. It's just a transient talking, thinking rubble. 
but everything out here, you can say, mm-hmm. is itself, by itself, for itself, nothing else. And the non-doership coming to that, you're seeing that you had nothing to do with it at all. Your mouth was just talking. My mouth was just talking to my friend. And I was up there somehow elevated saying, oh my God. And everything was going by itself. Yeah. And this is a really nice insight because at that point, it really shocked the shit out of me. Of course, you felt like, yeah. And uh, afterwards, you're, uh, you're starting to integrate that. And then you kind of becomes an everyday life. You don't go up in it anymore. You don't look for it. Sometimes, if it, if it may, it will appear. Uh, you can kind of like, ah. Oh. But you don't hang up in it anymore. But it really appreciates reality. You really get an understanding of it. And you really know when your mind, bias in mind, is interfering or not it's funny you know it's like uh when we started the conversation you know because it's like i got a tendency and everybody's got a tendency like you 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 move back into the comfortable mind space Mm -hmm. and like um and like i'm doing that like asking these questions and then like just as you were talking there i just remembered like in the last few days since we did our last session you know I've been having these like amazing experiences of consciousness where, mm. <clears throat> where it's just like a good example is yesterday. I, I was uh, with my daughter driving into town to take her to school and we stopped to get some bread and we got this like crunchy, dense Chilean bread. So we're driving and I grabbed some, I haven't eaten it in a year. It's so good. And like I grabbed <laughs> some and I'm looking at it just thinking, wow, I know it's going to be crunchy on the outside and inside it's dense and moist and chewy. Uh, this is going to be so good. And I just put it in my mouth and, and did it. it just turns into pure consciousness and all the effects of the crunchiness and everything. And then the whole, I'm driving along thinking, holy crap. And there's this idea of the, uh, it was awesome. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it was unbelievable, man. It was the best thing. It's just unbelievable. And, uh, and then there's this aspect of it where it's like, um, it's like you're seeing through reality mm-hmm. and you recognize kind of what you were saying about there in the mountain. You have this experience where you realize that, um, that like all these, all like you going down the mountain, you being preoccupied about your life. That's, that's just part of the movie, mm-hmm. right? It's like, there's like a movie playing. <laughs> there's yeah. like a movie yeah. playing. Yeah, which we've invested. It's like the fourth wall in like theater. It's like we actually believe Mm. we're in the movie. You know, we actually believe it. It's Mm. like I went, I went to see a movie with my kids the other night, and like for a few minutes, I was like, "Oh wow, this is really scary." And then, but it's not real. But that's actually what's happening with life. It's like, and for those moments when you just separate into this this exquisite rarefied transparency mm. yeah you suddenly realize that um what is going on what is going on Christopher? i mean you've been doing this longer than i have i mean what absolutely is nothing is happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you have the same relationship you know it's a very good example the one with the movies and also if you're playing computer and then, you know, yeah. when you're playing computer, you're so much that character. You know, someone kills you or something, you get so mad. And then yeah. you, you turn off the game and then you're <laughs> this here, you know? And then you go to the fridge and your wife or your husband is yelling at you. And then you get angry, you know? Right. <laughs> there is just this <laughs> superimposed sensation. Is nothing more than just sensations that we are taking as a me. It's a solid, very... Um, Mm, very much here kind of in your experience but you're taking for me but if you're out and you're in the wind a lot and then the wind becomes your you know one of the most general experience you have you might slip and you know identified with the wind because it's always there same with the ego you know it's just you know when you were a kid someone said you are scott yeah you became that he created you right there Hmm. 
or duplicate, duplicated in self, we can say. The idea of separateness. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who talk about this stuff. And um, uh, it's interesting. I interviewed a guy um, a couple of months ago called Jason Giorgiani. He's an author. And I, damn, he's really smart. And he's like... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's interesting because he, he's smart and he knows a lot. He's 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 an intellect, like super mm -hmm. intellect. He's like one of these guys with a photographic memory. He knows everything. And um, his big theory is about, um, uh, I mean, a lot of theories about uh, aliens and the mm -hmm. uh, presence of aliens on our world and how that's going to be exposed and various things like this. And it's, you know, it's fascinating. And uh, from the empirical world, and he's really empirical so he doesn't say this like based on fantasy it's empirically based everything um and so it all seems like really credible and then um um where am i going with this then like it seems really credible but then there's this uh, aspect oh yeah like the um i'm going to the simulation thing here like because we're talking about this and we're like okay there's we're actually just watching a kind of movie and there is like, and what Georgiani is talking about is kind of like the same, or what we're talking about really is this uh, this sort of movie. And so I guess my question is this, is like, um, some people think, and this is like exemplified in movies like The Matrix, I guess, where it's like, okay, it's a movie, but it's actually got negative, it comes from an evil place. We're actually... Mm -hmm. We're actually being used, our souls are being used by uh, an evil force, which is using us as, as an energy structure. I mean, that's basically mm -hmm. the hypothesis of the matrix. And there's, there's like, um, the, the experience is so strange when you become aware of the mm -hmm. non-doership mm -hmm. and the, the uh, precision and technology, I guess, it seems like mm -hmm. a technology, which is able to create this experience it's so mm. advanced it's beyond anything humanity could ever understand in a trillion years mm. i mean it's easy to understand why people might think think of that you know uh like it might be like it's a conspiracy right mm. what do you think about that you think it's you think i mean it, it's it's not a conspiracy right <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy is like a rash first of all you see same as you create what you are. If you're seeing that, is that, if that is your current experience of reality, that you're actually seeing the world with that mindset, that's what you are. You're judging yourself, literally. And it's something that, you know, it's, it's something that you're seeing in a certain kind of paradigm. We need to go through the paradigms. It's very needed for uh, evolution of consciousness. The thing is that don't get stuck, please. <laughs> One good thing is that, you know, you don't, don't forget that you're full of shit. Never forget that, please. You know, whatever theory that you're constructing about the relative world is not true. Now, the collective world has constructed a lot of collective theories which are working. We're creating that together. We're creating that reality together. Now, most of the world are stuck in that. You can see the difference on the continents too, you know, uh, different in the economical um, eth and ethnical groups too. Everyone is seeing the world very differently. But in collectively society, you know, uh, also globally, there's some shared collective ideas about stuff. Now, you can go and see that, that the world is in chaos, that there's war happening, you know, there's a building of the, you know, there's a, a surging of superpower, you know, there's talk about, uh, you know, elites are taking over the world, um, suppressing humankind, the corona, you know, all of that. That is a very material. It's nice to have that, but it will be nicer to notice yourself seeing what you're thinking and most importantly you're noticing the emotions that they're representing what's the emotions inside you as you're having these thoughts it's what paranoia maybe how does that feel 
What does paranoia feel like? Do you feel that? What kind of fear is it representing? All right, there's some form of fear I'm feeling for thinking these thoughts. Is it also a sense of isolation, right? Then you're feeling that. And as you do that, you will naturally go up in your paradigm, in your consciousness. The thing is that you will not want to get stuck there. So you're noticing the fears, you know, the images representing the fears. And also mental images can have mental emotions to them too. You can think a thought, your biggest fear, for example, you're swimming out in deep ocean, something is grabbing your legs and pulling you down. And that was a thought. It has an emotion to it, like, you know, it has an emotion to it. But it's not real because it was a mental picture. Now, the one who is real, what is real is not coming from your mind here, is not produced by thoughts. It is actually the sensations arising, being given to you in this moment. That's truth. And you're going to see how those sensations are blossoming into your current reality as it is right now. Everything around you, as you see it, in this moment is you, your experience. And you want to go to the true experience, which is not polluted by a superimposed biased mind. It is what it is. That's where we want to go. So, yeah, that's it. Question, when you, when you are going through your... Um experiences like you had the non doership then you became aware of kundalini did when you were going through the kundalini experience did you have any awareness of like chakras and all that stuff when you were going through that i went to the chakras once my really? spiritual evolution was extremely fast yeah it was uh, <clears throat> uh from spontaneous awakening into full awakening was two and a half years uh, yeah. Last the half year, I was with uh, someone called Elias, uh, Germany, living in Japan, who was my Rasa giver. Highly regard uh, him as a good friend, fantastic friend. Elias, what's his last name? Satyananda. I think it's his website. Okay. Elias. Yeah. Good guy. He's funny. Yeah, we have a good chat yeah. together. Um, let's see here. So. One of the things is that I was not spiritually polluted. Um, so, and I was highly intuitive. So I was very lucky to have pure uh, knowing right away. So one of the things that I've, you know, I, I wasn't wobbling around in some non-awakened spiritual teachers literature reading about how to meditate for enlightenment and stuff like that. I was not wobbling around in that. I knew that it was something I could never comprehend. And I knew that it was something that I will never, ever get to. And it put me out in a dilemma. And it puts the mind exactly where it needs to be, against a wall. You cannot do anything for it. And I also mm -hmm. knew that I was full of shit. <clears throat> Whatever I constructed as a theory towards awakening, I discarded it. I was wow. seeing the process re repeat itself, you know, and then you get aware of that, that I was constructing, 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 constructing. And I noticed how the mind was working, you know, seeing that all the time. And yeah. I listened to Alan Watts. Really? He's the only not... guy that yeah. I listened to. He really? is so practical down to earth. And most importantly, he doesn't take it serious. He's a funny guy. And it's exactly the relationship you should have to your awakening. Don't take it serious. Yeah. You think Watts was awakened? Alan Watts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. Very much. Very much. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because I've listened to a bunch of his stuff. I, I don't really get into it much myself. So it's interesting. Okay. But he's very popular, obviously, you know. Yeah. Um, that's funny because it's funny what you're saying about the mind is full of shit and it's just going to construct stuff. Because what I was going to ask you when I was asking about the chakras was that when you were talking about how the, like the way the mind works, here's my full of shit theory about how it works is that um, like, it's almost like, I got a bunch of ways of thinking about this, but like the, the chakras come right down through the center channel. Mm -hmm. And then like, there's the, uh, 
like what it seems to me is the thought, the mind works on the future and the past, right? So it's always desiring something or lamenting something which was screwed up or whatever in the past, right? Yeah. And so you've got these two channels of, of the mind, which are basically creating time. It just creates time because mm -hmm. that's what the mind does. But actually yeah. presence, presence is not time. And so my theory, well, it's not my theory, it's probably somebody else's theory, but like the chakras, which is the central channel is outside of time. That's the presence. But we're in Ida and Pingala, which are the two channels at the side, and we're we're going back and forth in these things, and it's completely the problem, or the thing with con the consciousness is that, or the mind. Let's say the mind is that it's transparent, like mm -hmm. you can't. That's mm -hmm. what makes it so tricky. It's like you yes. can't, like, oh, there it is, and it comes in. It just like descends like a dream, mm -hmm. and like it's absolutely it's so invisible, right? You cannot you cannot you cannot. You cannot go after the mind. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Yeah. I, at one point, I was, and I think it's dangerous because at one point, like when I was meditating and stuff, like I would, I would like, because I think, I think at some levels of consciousness, you can catch glimpses of it, like uh, maybe through the third eye or something. There's, you can see stuff. But like, um, but if you, if the mind knows, like if, if you go like if you try and go after the mind it's really dangerous i think that's how people maybe go crazy like because yeah. the mind is the mind is way too powerful you know yeah you cannot you cannot actively go after that you need to just uh, drop it and and be it you need to be the mind you need to you need to be its problems you need to act it out in experience you need you need to yeah get angry you need to feel hate you need to do it and then you will become conscious of it but it's taken as you right now that charge which is kept between yeah. the sensation and you know there's a stickiness between it you need to act out on that or i sit still and see I it act out how, inside like, i think this is how like some of these people like those like the directors of the matrix and stuff, like they've got this negative view of it. And maybe it's because it's like what you're saying, it's because they feel fear or whatever they feel rather than just like observing. Right. It's like, like, I guess it's karmic or something. Like if you start observing and you get a vibe, like, Oh, there's something weird. Then it, then it just, it, it generates a whole mythology based on the fear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And it seems almost like, you know, like, because I've had that too. I mean, I've had some really scary experiences, like, because I wasn't awake in mm -hmm. this sense. Like, since I started working with you, something changed. And, um, like, there was, uh, you know, it's funny, on my channel, like, there's there's tons of videos, like, when all this started happening, you know, like, uh, and, like, I was having these experiences of waking up in the middle of the night in different dimensions and, like, De demons and all, all kinds of crazy experiences you know and i'm like what is going on i'm going crazy man right um <laughs> but i always but i was always trying to be like i was always trying to like analyze it and like i would you know I, I put it all on youtube i i've sort of hidden most of it now because it's embarrassing but like uh, <laughs> <laughs> right but like I'll, most of the people who see those videos will have seen them you know but um uh but yeah but it seems like If you can change, if you can relax, if you can relax and um, what do you think about this? There's um, with the, the, last, the last time we talked uh, when we did our last session, I can't remember what we we're talking about, but there, it seems to happen with a bunch of people. I, I, I was noticing in an in a interview with somebody today, it was like an Adya Shanti interview and somebody was talking about the awakening and the, how difficult it had been. And like, <clears throat> I did, I've done quite a lot of reading like of magical stuff because it went at the time when I started, I was like, okay, there's something, it's about magic. So I did a lot of reading and I came across this stuff uh, about elemental balance and elemental balance is about the classical elements, earth, air, water, fire, all that stuff. And, um, and, uh, and there's this idea that like uh, our, 
feelings or emotions, whatever those feelings are, and you were pretty lucky because you were more intellectual, I think. But like some people, you know, they, they confront this. Uh, you can confront awareness. You confront non-duality and you just get scared and you'll never go back there. Mm. Right. Because it's just too mm. much. Right. Mm. Um, and. Um, but then there's this aspect. And so you, some people might classify that if you see it and you get scared, that might be considered like sort of earth kind of feeling. It's a very mm. fear driven feeling. And then there's a process, as you look at the magical literature, I guess, there's a process you can go through where you sort of transform this energy and you can sort of slowly sort of try and understand this feeling in a different way. Um, and I went through, well, I did a lot of work with this uh, and I still do. Uh, but it seems to me, and I don't know if this, I don't know how you feel about this because your your transformation was so so rapid. This probably just seems like another construct to you, but you know, like, um, but it seems to me like a lot of these people who have difficult times, um, they've kind of got these sort of energetic imbalances, right? So there's these like imbalances. So maybe there's two, like there's there's this sort of big, like you have this fire of your heart for curiosity and other people this fire and they have this other energy, which is just fear, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then other people, this other energy, which is just lust or whatever. And so they don't mm-hmm. have a chance to even try and find awareness yep. because they're so caught up in these, in, mm-hmm. in like the predominant energy, whatever they were born into. Whatever mm-hmm. the big bang of their consciousness was in this reality right now, they've mm-hmm. been given like a, a custom configuration of energy. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is the point of life? Big question. Is it to just try and figure this stuff out or is it just to try and live through whatever, whatever we're given? Because, you know, if I lived through some of the stuff that I was given, I'd probably be in jail right now, you know, because I was yeah. given a lot of crazy mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. crazy shit. And luckily, you know, I was cor- given some corrective stuff. So, um, when I see if it's things like that and situations like that, especially in my sessions, I feel uh, great compassion and great love because what they're essentially trying to do is then hurting themselves because they want to give themselves self love. And I see myself, which of course is. Uh, Magical and heart binding, miraculous, very humble, compassionate. People who are very deep emotional turmoil. My only advice to them is to go right into the center of it. Emotionally or emotionally. emotionally or through presence? No, you go straight into, for example, if you feel a form of helplessness, that it's just pulling you down. Go down. Go straight down into it. If you're not doing that and you're being pulled down and there's someone resisting to that, you're going to have a dual. Well, you're going to have a relation. You're going to have the puller and the resistor. And then you're going to, in the middle, you're going to create some, a lot of this tension person that is super afraid just to move because there's pulling this way and there's dragging that way. You don't know which one is you. Of course we don't because it needs to be discharged. The whole thing is you right now. So there's just this tensed up person in the middle was afraid, really afraid to move. It's very natural. You know, there's plus and minus. Yep. And then there's t- a charge in the middle, like a battery. That battery yeah. is g- getting more and more power from those sides because they're yeah. acting out. So they're creating like the static, um, you know, like the comb you go through. Yep. Yeah. Stacy is what it's called. I can't remember. And um, that person that is caught in between the charges is going to be you right there who is really afraid. So what you're going to do in those circumstances? What can you do? One thing that I learned really early on is that the only way out is through. Be the helplessness. Be the sorrow. Instead of trying to resist it and then you become the victim. You take a victim role. It becomes your person. It becomes who you are. You become a victim. 
That's going to be your experience. That's going to be your reality. That's going to be what you attract. You're going to attract situations that puts you in the victim role because that is who you are. You create what you are. So instead of being the victim, you're having this really deep emotions that you're highly allergic to, that you're saying like, oh no, kind of too. Go straight down into it. See what you find. It's certainly not what you fear. What about addictions and that kind of stuff? Because there's obviously people who feel pulled towards substance mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And people would say, hey, listen, that's a bad mm -hmm. move. Maybe it's better to find some other kind of uh, solution yeah. than going straight into it, right? Because that's and there's a patterns. lot of like there's a lot of social currents which are trying to pull people down into path. And you know what? There's so many like um what I was what did I call them? There's like uh there's like pathways which society has created unconsciously to pull people down into various addictions, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you get and so a lot of these people might not even have might, might not even have a personality. Well, I guess maybe they do a predisposition, but then they get sucked down into these addictions. And like, yeah. you know, the world of rock and roll is littered with the dead who screwed up because they got suckered into some of these addictions. And like uh that's pretty sad. So in those situations, yeah, I wonder because what my point, I guess, was that you know, like, like um is like i i did quite a lot of work with this when i started meditating like moving into like moving in meditationally in in place of actually and i've done crazy stuff too like trying to move into move into this stuff but then like mm -hmm. right actually moving into the space like meditationally and actually seeing these two charges and the mm -hmm. magnetism between them mm -hmm. and then and then like and, and like the ability to do that, like the meditational ability to move in there was like transformational to consciousness. It you was only need to see. Exactly. Yeah. You only need to see. There's no work required for anything. The only thing you need to do is see. You need to become aware. And awareness is not something that you have to uh, like intellectually try to understand something about a sensation that you're having. You only no. need to stay there. For instance, if you're having a sensation of um, uh, helplessness, that's a good one because there's so many have that helplessness. You're not going to, when I say dive in there, it not, doesn't mean that you're going to dissect it and try to just figure out what it is. You're going to dig it like that. With awareness, it's the same as a, a beam of sun. If you put it on an ice cube, which is, you can say, your helplessness, the sun is just going to naturally melt it. Yeah, by it being there, by looking at it, and the same exact relation is to your um, unresolved charges. You just stay there. Don't try to do anything with it. Please don't try to interrupt anything. Just very quietly, just look at it. Have your awareness there, and it will naturally start to peel. Yeah. Life is created when awareness is there. When you're stagnant in your life, that means you're not aware. Awareness creates and destroys. That's amazing. Um, so in a way, <laughs> when you're saying go into it, it's really more of a, it's, it's really just becoming aware of it. You're not saying, so if I've got a desire to go out and shoot up a bunch of heroin, maybe sit down and contemplate the heroin, contemplate the feeling, or don't go out and shoot it, but just uh, contemplate the whole experience of what it is, you know? And you know, I go through this myself because I've got like a, a relationship with alcohol, which isn't extreme, you know, it's mm -hmm. not extreme, but it's, but it's recurrent and, mm -hmm. you know, I get no problem. It has been extreme sometimes in my life, you know, but um <clears throat> not really extreme but overdone mm -hmm. but uh you know it keeps coming back and so like one of the things i do is like i say okay if i get the desire <clears throat> to drink i'm i can drink whatever i want you can do it but before mm -hmm. you do it you got to sit down and just meditate for 30 minutes <laughs> yeah right and for after instance. which you can drink as much as you want you know have as much as you want but just contemplate it first you know mm -hmm. and oftentimes that uh it's it's funny 
I'll tell you, this is a completely different experience, but like a few years ago, I was, uh, this is like eight years ago. Um, I was thinking, you know, I was trying to start a little business, you know, and the only way you can do a business is you got to do sales. And like, dude, I'm just like petrified of like, I just couldn't do it. I'm like, okay, how am I going to, cause you got to like call people up and do this stuff. I'm like, how am I going to do this? You know? And I, I, I tried picking up the phone. And I, I couldn't talk. <laughs> Right, and I'm like, I've got a great idea. I'm gonna get some beer. I'll chill out. So I had some beer. That, uh, didn't work. So I'll smoke. Some, I'll smoke uh, some weed. Didn't work. And then I had this crazy idea. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try meditating. And I mm -hmm. wasn't even good at meditating. And it was the only thing that worked. Oh, I would yeah. meditate for five minutes, and all of a sudden it was easy. And mm -hmm. it was funny. And it's like this whole idea about awareness. And the, the funny thing is, I don't know if you've ever seen the art of uh, Alex Gray. He's one of these artists who does a lot of like DMT art, but his art is it's very popular, but his art is very focused. He's got all kinds of different images, but a lot of his imagery has like eyes, like there's eyes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there's sort of these like, and so it's like, it's the, it's the um, illustration of consciousness, but all the time there are eyes everywhere. Mm. And it's like, it's like, it's a, what the eyes seem to represent is. Um, it's like a, a spider web with morning dew on it, where every drop of dew is one piece of eye. That's it. Everything's conscious awareness. Everything. It's infinite awareness. It's unbelievable. Infinite aspects, infinite expressions. It's just infinite. Never stops. Never begun. Do you have any experience yourself of like, um, probably, I guess, but like, like, a because universal consciousness is, is the currency of the day, I guess. But do you ever have any experiences like where you're, maybe you're looking at like a, an animal or a leaf and you find yourself moving into that object and you sort of occupy that space and you're like, oh, I'm a leaf or, and then move off to something else or mm. never. No, it's more happening as a direct knowing for me, not a, a pulling in like that. I can look at stuff and then I am, um, you know, I just see it's me. It's me, <laughs> kind of like yeah. that. Um, but that is not something that you're kind of chasing, you know. Um, it's been uh, maybe two and a half years, one and a half. No, I think it's two around two years. I'm gonna say two years since I um I uh, was so lucky to see full awakening, you know, what it was all about. And then now at my current state, I'm the only thing that I'm doing is integrating um uh, emotional trauma. This is my concern right now. I don't want to do anything else. And I feel yeah. a lot of my parents in it and my grandparents are there too. So there's kind of like this, it feels like there's this uh, mixture of um, emotional trauma for ancestral line, yeah. which is not me because it's so clear that it's, it's yeah. not brought, it's not created by me. It's something that was passed on and I can feel them so deeply in these charges mm. and I can feel their pain. And the more and faster I realize that I actually am my father, I am my mother, her pain yeah. is actually my pain, the better it's going to go. But this is a stage that I'm in right now. Before that, I was somewhere else. It is not yeah. who I am now. The only thing I desire these days is not to contemplate reality, not to get any experience of some kind. The only concern I have these days is doing exactly what these charges are asking me for. And it is wow. mostly lying in bed, watching beautiful nature programs, um, making good food. But, you know, this mostly just staying inside. Just yeah. really being there with myself, not doing much, having the sessions and then just absolutely relax don't do anything else and eat chips and you know candy <laughs> just really that there's yeah that's what i'm doing at the moment <laughs> and it's and it's so great it's so great <laughs> that's funny yeah you know like i hear a lot of times like people who go through awakenings and stuff like it's difficult for them to work 
you know, like to work and like go through. And I, I work from mm. home. So, you know, and luckily, yeah. like I got a bunch of work right now. But like when I focus on work, it's like I'm in work and it's cool. And then when I stand yeah. up and I walk around, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> where were i <laughs> yeah and what you were saying there about like because i was talking about moving consciousness into other objects that, that's like a magical technique it's like there's one of the practices in a magical book is and i think it's, it's like one of these like rudimentary practices to start becoming accustomed to what consciousness is so it's like for mm. people who are kind of curious um but the interesting thing about mm. what you were saying is how you recognize yourself and everything is like um I've had the experience like doing ayahuasca and stuff, but the uh, the big surprise was after our first session, like the next day I was driving and then just everything just turned. It was like, I was looking, I told you about this, I was looking at this cloud and all, I'm looking at it and all of a, and all of a sudden it, I, I seemed like, I felt like I knew the cloud. I'm like, what? And I'm yeah. looking at this cloud, I'm, yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, it, and it was me. Mm. And I'm like, what? Yes. And then all of a sudden yes. it just spread out from the cloud, went through the sky, went through the trees, everything just turned into me. <gasps> mm. And I, I just, I just stopped the car. I'm just sitting there like, what? Because it was funny because the day before mm. we'd done Rasa and, you know, we chatted and we did 15 minute meditation and uh, I'm like, okay, bye. I'm like, okay. Mm. Oh, well, I guess that was bullshit. You know, whatever. And then <laughs> the next day I'm driving along and it's like, <sighs> and it was like the most profound. I mean, it was deeper than, it was like as deep or deeper than ayahuasca. And it was just from a chat. And I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's real. And it's like, what's it's funny is potent. like, there's this. Uh, I've got a friend on the um, on my on the channel, and he's like, uh, he's like, he's a really heavy DMT user. He takes chances. He takes so much stuff. It's unbelievable. Mm. And he's got balls of steel, and nothing faces him. And he's a young guy. Uh, he lives in Italy, and he's like, I'm just astonished at how much stuff. He's really knowledgeable. But like the amazing thing is, is like he's like, well, you know, it's like it's just psychology. I'm like, dude, how can you say this? How do you think it's psychology? <laughs> like, how can you have all these experiences and you just think it's psychology, you know? Um, and so uh what's funny is like, but these these uh I well, I think the thing with him is like he was I I was going through this sort of spirit spiritual phase, which I can I'm kind of still in where like where I can like read like the Bhagavad Gita and I'm there, like I'm there. I can sense Krishna and I can see all the, I can just see everything like in the, in the mind's eye. Mm. And he's like, oh, dude, he's like, this is nonsense. And like when I was talking about spirits and the demons, he's like, dude, this your psychology is nonsense, blah, blah, blah. And I'm mm. like, dude, how can you say this? But what's funny is he also said to me like, well, you know, you're not going to get anything if you're not taking drugs, right? Because I was like, dude, you can meditate and you can evoke spirits and you can move into higher consciousness. He's like, that doesn't, you can't do it. And I think for a lot of people, especially people on this channel or in this community of like, uh, of like new, uh, sort of new age explorers of consciousness, they don't think it's possible to to explore consciousness using consciousness, right? You got to do it. You got to like take some kind of substance. And um what is Rasa? Is Rasa not a substance? A substance. <laughs> right, it's not a substance. Right? It's not a substance. <laughs> you don't need to a... take any drugs to waken. That is bullshit. It's absolutely right? bullshit. Yeah. Because you're not a drug. My God, you just, just need. Yeah, but that is that is his way, and what a wonderful experience he's having, and I right? highly admire him, and you know be as it is he's wonderful what yeah. an experience to have <laughs> to see all of that i mean very unique um but you don't you don't need anything like that you don't even need to you know uh, because you already think right now by having that kind of thinking that there is some form of huge gap that you have to cross you're like you're imagining you're here and you need to bump up up to here now, what is that? Let's get really down to the bottom right away. What is that? That is you thinking that you are way far from your goal. And then you are somehow, in, it's almost impossible to get there. So you're inflicted with doubt. And it becomes, you know, doubt over time. It can turn into, you know, these desperate acts. And, you know, you are also believing that you're not supposed to be where you are now. 
So you're just in conflict with yourself. If you removed all that right now, all that thinking, you would be very much closer to awakening than you've ever been before. It's you who are in the way. That's the thing. The one who is looking for enlightenment is the reason you're not enlightened. <laughs> you, you have to see that the seeking is bullshit. The seeker is bullshit. It serves up until one level, but most it's going to accumulate here. They get into come some come form of comfortable spirituality where you start to accumulate. You take a lot of books and you start to do meditation classes and you take retreats and you get into all these kinds of stuff and you just accumulate, 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 accumulate. Because now you're at a new phase of your life. Now the thing here is that we can be very conscious that you are stepping up a paradigm because now you're sensing things you didn't know before. But the same process is going to happen as the last paradigm. You're going to stop here. You need to go. <laughs> you need to go. And by thinking that you need drugs for that is absolutely bullshit. It's seriously so bullshit. You don't. Trust me. I did it without drugs. <laughs> yeah. You only need to stop. That's the thing. If you stop, if there is some notion of no meaning, you know, to your every day, what happens? You become distorted of all kinds of emotion and you need to go somewhere, do something, you know, that is exactly why you're not waking up because you're still that. To wake up, you need to get in contact with that deep, never ending, screaming yearning for waking up no matter what. I mean, no matter what. That's going to fast forward you. Don't fuck around. You only want truth. This is the only thing. You only want truth. Nothing else matters. I don't care what's going to happen to me. I don't care where I'm going to end up. I just need to know the truth. What is never changing? That's the only thing you need. Hmm. And Rasa. Amazing. And Rasa itself, the method of Rasa. Yeah. You can call it a lot of names. Here we're calling it Rasa. It is what you always asked for. <laughs> the hey, thing hey, about... Uh, can you can you hold on just for two seconds? I think my I think my computer seems to be unplugged, and I am plugged in. Hallelujah. Okay, we're good. Okay. Um, recording. No, it's recording. <laughs> That's cool. I just recorded my go. run to the bathroom. Okay, I'll have to edit that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So we're good. you were talking. About, you were about to have a. You were about to have a good vibe there on Rasa. Um, you had some energy. Rasa. Going there rasa like um like rasa i mean it, rasa is like from it's like uh ramaji who's taught a bunch of people how to do it did you work with ramaji or no just with elias yeah no 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 i was under um, education for a year to become uh, a rasa giver you need really? to go through a, a year of progress before you can uh, before you can become one well, I want to make sure, I guess, that you're in for it. You're not just here by some face, you know, saying that you want to heal the world or anything like that. And then, booyah, you just yeah. drop out. You know, it, it, something that has to be called inside you. Yeah. Early call that never drops. It just ignites more and more and more and more and more. And then, yeah. Let's see here. Rasa. Rasa. It is something that I'm always feeling. It's always in my conscious experience, pretty much. It is highly feminine, like mm. a curtain, like a silk curtain that is warm, that is wrapped around you always. 
and it forms uh, an opening on your head. And even going there is just, uh, you immediately get that it's too much to comprehend. You cannot, you cannot go there. It's impossible. <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's, yeah, you cannot, the mind here, you know, not yet. But it's, um, it's been, it's waiting. It's like this waiting thing that is, you know, just like there's a mother and a child. It's just a constant motherly love just is wrapped around you waiting, just waiting for you to open. And this is the sessions. We're having that opening and we're letting that just flow into you. And the, the effects that we're having on it is just amazing. It just baffled me so many times of seeing my own. Also, holy crap, I had some really wet, you know, awakening with so much stuff from, <clears throat> from the Rasa. Incredibly a lot. And there's some who have seemingly a dry awakening. But mostly there are wet awakenings with Rasa. And that's where you're having, you know, profound stuff happening to you, major shifts. Yep. And I think it's also needed that, you know, um, it's also very important, not with just the Rasa, but that we as a person, me as who I am now, is tuning in to become uh, the Rasa. You know, it, it's tuning in, moving more and more towards that love. You don't, you don't seek higher experiences anymore. The only thing that you have, which is burning in your heart, is that how am I holding my way from a higher form of, you know, self-love, self-compassion? The only concern you have is love, which is not even a concern. It's just something that is just more and more fluidly experienced in your experience. And Rasa is kind of forming, I feel, me into that. And as of me, as of my sessions, I become a much better conveyor of the words needed for that person. It's like it, you intuitively just know what to say. And maybe the word doesn't even make sense when you're saying it, but just it just strikes the one who listens to it. And... Um, hmm. the sessions are very calm rasa is extremely calm nothing is required you don't need to meditate anymore you just need to stop to let it awaken you to let it blossom inside you it's like red light stop every time you look it stops <laughs> Yeah. The blossom stops, you know. <laughs> like, <ooh. laughs> well, you're not you're not trying to do any like I'm transferring energy, you just stop. Oh just... no, 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 no. Nope. Nothing like that. Okay. You're just resting. Yeah. And it happens for you. And I'm seeing it again and again and again. You know, the you know, when you just stop, when you stop looking and having, you know, the transmission. You're letting it integrate for a couple of weeks. You just have miracles happen. And the thing is that it is an accumulating thing. So after the three or four times, you're going to actually start to physically feel it in your body. You're going to start to sense the rasa. And then you're going to notice how it is actually interacting in your experience. But it is an opening into whatever you ever asked for, whatever you ever desired. And that is actually getting back to who you are, which is a full awakening. We don't stop at the first degree enlightenment where you notice that nothing is you. The non-doership, no self, it's called. You are going all the way onto full awakening, which is that you become everything, but there is no center of circumference. There's emptiness everywhere. But that emptiness is the potential of everything, which is the realization. You're going to go back into becoming your ego. You're going to solidify once more. But now you have seen it is dead. You cut the root. But the ego is still out there on the lodge in the middle of the ocean, screaming and kicking. Like on a timber in the middle of the ocean or a fish on land. It's going to kick and scream the hell out of you. but 
cannot be stopped. So after full awakening, you're having, uh, of course, there are going to be episodes where you're feeling that you're going exactly, you're going back. You're going back to before you were awakened. You're becoming that ugliness again. But it's so much needed because you need to integrate all aspects. The past needs to come to pass. And that's also what Rasa is doing. It is doing post-awakening integration as well. So we can do... (laughs) So the essence of Rasa is that it purely only interacts with awakening and post-awakening. That... That's what it do, it's doing. It's not doing, I don't know, it is molecular, biological cell constructions or DNA healing or anything. Like, it doesn't do it like that. It yeah. is only constructed, it's only taking you towards a full awakening and integration of awakening, which is the only thing you should have on your mind because it is your life. When you have an awakening and you have a realization and we have a full realization, that realization needs to be biologically embedded into your body, which is also going to be reflected into the external. So that means that your realization, your mind has to unfold into your external life as well. First, we realize, and then it will go some time until it will actually appear out here. That is the integration period. So when you have enlightenment, you have to integrate your life to become enlightenment, which is going to take some time because you're still going to shed some ego. Uh, You're going to shed some hurt, um, some old hurt aspects. So the ego is not something that you want to demonize, you know, saying, oh, my ego, like that, like some kind of enemy, you know, that is horrible. Never do that. The ego is a result of your hurt. Do you really want to talk that way to yourself, to someone who is hurt? No. Be compassionate about the ego. It's an accumulation, a conglomerate of your hurt and resistance. Um, <clears throat> on the Ramaji's website he says that um, rasa is uh in the lineage of ramana maharshi the great mm-hmm. indian uh, saint and um yeah i got that vibe just like last week or the week before i was like in this state of like universal consciousness and i was like and it just crossed my mind briefly and it was just like it's like i just can't imagine anything higher than rasa it's like when you move into this it's just like I mean, it's, it, it's like, well, I guess I, <laughs> it's I consciousness. Like, I was like, I guess this is what Mahar- Ramana Maharshi was feeling because that's what it is. You know, it's just, it's so unbelievable. And like when I was eating that bread yesterday, like as I picked it up, it was almost like it wasn't even the bread. It was just like, it was like this golden light, like in my head lit up. And that was like, when I saw that light, I'm like, it was, it was like, and it was so beautiful. It was like, it was like, like the light was like delicious or something. It was like beautiful just to feel it. And that was like, that led me into the experience of the conscious of this. Co- it's so amazing, man. It's unbelievable. It's funny. You know, I was, um, <laughs> I saw this, uh, I saw this uh, image. It was Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, whatever his name is, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, he says, uh, he says, The second coming of Christ is a transformation of human consciousness, a shift from time to presence, from thinking to pure consciousness, not the arrival of some man or woman. And I got to tell you, that day when I was Mm -hmm. when I saw the cloud and everything turned into God, it was an experience of consciousness. But afterwards, when I was thinking about it, you know, um, like uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, if a Christian experienced this, they would think it was Jesus. Like, they would freak the so, shit out of them. They would shit their pants, probably. Too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it was your standard Christian, it, it would it definitely, you know. Um, but uh, the thing is that when you're a Christian, you're in, in when you're a Christian, you're already in uh, duality because you believe that there's a Jesus who is going to save you. And yeah. Of course, when and a priest or a, someone enters non dual consciousness it's going to freak the shit out of them because then they're they cannot be god 
that's no, no, you know, no. But there's some saints who has amazingly understood this. In typical saints. Yeah. Into non. Yeah, and there's there's a whole branch of like non-dual Christianity apparently. So I mean, I think some of them are trying to come to terms with that, and then like, I the more... bet. But today is much more easier with the world that we're having and the openness yeah. it brings. Yeah. Before <laughs> early 90s, 1800s. Right? Oh my God. Yeah. Because like <laughs> there's, be a whole, there's, a branch, there's a whole branch of Christianity where they don't they don't want to, I mean, they actually say don't meditate, right? Don't meditate and don't don't approach consciousness. Don't do that. Whatever happens, do not approach consciousness. You know, just feel, feel lowly. And it, it's it's just um mm. Yeah, but I mean, it's interesting because like Paul is actually trying. He's like with that. He's actually trying to like um, align the, the two ideas. Like like he's trying to say awakening is could be perceived as Christ. You know, I mean, I could see mm -hmm. that. You know, because it's so astonishing. It's so astonishing and beautiful. You know, huh? Um, hold on, mm -hmm. a um, <sighs> we've been talking for a while, huh? <laughs> yeah we have like a, time flies been, man. man it does fly mm. yeah you know i'm i got one more one more question yeah mm -hmm. and then like this is it's not really related to where we've been going but you know <clears throat> okay two more questions like you have you done have you done much meditation then or you just went straight into rasa no i was doing some uh some time periods of meditation i think the longest i did was meditate one hour a day for 32 days then i okay, quit yeah. afterwards yeah wow. but i did uh, concentration exercises i did samatha yana uh, and contemplation uh, okay when i dedicated myself like that it was uh, horrible something that i really didn't want to do but i thought like I, I need concentration i need to get stuff going you know it was one way uh, of seeing that it was actually going to giving me backlash in the end. What was naturally inclined to me was there was a non-stop contemplation going on. Whatever I was doing, I was contemplating. It just yeah. went. Now that was natural to me. Of course, when I just did that so much easier, when I was forcing myself, you kind of built up this resistance over some weeks and then you just threw everything out the window and then you actually didn't want to touch it for two months, maybe three months, maybe never more. Interesting. Hmm. I could never get into meditation. And then like, uh, when was it? Six years ago, I think, or five years ago, my shaman did some kind of like initiation, like energy initiation. And then after that, like whenever I meditated, it became so pleasurable meditating. Like it was hmm. just like ecstatic yeah. that it was like, yeah. So I could go into two or three hours and it was like, this is unbelievable. So I'd be like, I can't wait to meditate. And I'd get up mm. at like four in the morning and I'd do like three hours just lying in bed, but just, just contemplation and like focus. Unbelievable. But, um, but yeah, I think a lot of people have this problem, but it's not necessary then. It's kind of like sadhana meditation. None of it's really mm. necessary, but what you're talking about, about the contemplation is kind of what's happening now is like, I've kind of like, I'm kind of losing interest a bit in meditation. I meditated this morning, but it's like, why bother? Because like, if I just, it's just like everything is a contemplation. It's just like walking around, just walking around town. It's like you. I just become aware of the nature of reality or something, just like yeah. walking. Mm. And it's like you don't really need to meditate anymore. Just uh, no, it's just yeah. uh, this natural want of uh, a higher understanding. This is the thing. This consciousness naturally expands. It does. If you plant. A plant in the middle of your uh, of a field it's going to grow outwards because it is just what it's doing it's its nature everything seeks expansion look at people you have two families settle down in the middle of nowhere they're going to slowly start to expand it's going to become a village town civilization you know it just expands everything expands just like the universe there's just this natural thing now when you're having you know when you're contemplating too you're also expanding you're getting bigger understanding and that produces happiness it does and then consciousness want to ex express that in form of you know joy happiness you get a good sensation in your body that you're getting bigger and bigger understandings 
And then at one point, maybe there will be more and more peace. There will be silent. You have, a, you have integrated everything that you needed. And then there is no need for the process of contemplation anymore. And what becomes now is just the peace. Interesting. Just that deep so there, knowing. So the end game is just nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> On every single level, that's true. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Okay, let's end on that note then. That was that was kind of amusing. Yeah. Um Dude, thanks so much for coming on for chat. Um, yeah, me too, man. I enjoyed it so much. So fun. Yeah, Always that was really good, man. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking to you, man. That was really cool. Um, mm. And for talking about a lot of those ideas. Uh, what, and your website is, what's your website for people who are interested? Uh, finish me, which is uh, www, finish, and then this, what's that called? Dash. In, dash, dash. Finish yeah. dash me dot com. Yeah. So if any of you guys are like, yeah, want to finish off, you know, I've been saying to people like, go, go to finish me and go do Rasa. But then I was thinking about it afterwards. I'm like, you know what? Think about it. Think very carefully about if you really want to finish because it's such a profound process. You know, yes. this separates. My... Yeah. It separates the serious seeker from the not serious seeker it does because it it truly is an end of your seeking which of course the person it addicted into looking in, in kind of like this experience uh, junkie it needs to have experiences but of course you know you we need to go we need to get humble and uh, see that we as a person me can never join enlightenment it's just not possible and Personal too, it took me actually half a year before I acknowledged Raza. When my friend told me about it, I was actually making fun of him. And I said, I, you cannot buy your way into enlightenment, I said to him. I remember it so well. Yeah. And after half a year more, and I'm seeing his progress, and he was entering non-dual in the States and telling me about and I can just see the change in his eyes. I was like, okay, what the fuck is this all about? And then I tried it. <laughs> And then it just blew me, blew me right out. But yeah. what is, is very important is that we need to really attune into your heart and just ask yourself, what do you really want? What do you yeah. really want here? And be very honest with that answer. Do you want to seek? Do you want to go around some more? Is there some experience that you're really longing for? Then please go ahead and have that. Now, if you're sick and tired and you don't know what to do anymore, then you can have a chat. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Okay, let's end, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Um, let me just sign off. Boink. Yes.